When a request comes in the application, ASP.NET MVC automatically maps request data to parameter values for action methods. So if an action method takes a parameter, the MVC framework looks for a parameter with the same name in the request data. If a parameter with that name exists, the framework will automatically pass the value of that parameter to the target action. This parameter value can be embedded in the URL, it can be in the query string, or in the data posted using a form. So back in the movies controller, I'm going to create a new action. Public action result edit with a parameter called ID. And here I just want to return simple content. ID equals plus ID. Let's run the application. First we compile with Control Shift B. Alt and Tab. Back to the browser. I'm going to change the URL to movies slash edit slash one. This is an example of a parameter embedded in the URL. You can see that it gets automatically mapped by the MVC framework. I can also pass this parameter in the query string. So control L, I'm going to change this to ID equals one. It gets mapped again. But let's see what happens if I rename this parameter to movie ID. To rename, we press F2. So all references are renamed automatically. Movie ID. One more time, build. Back to the browser. Refresh. We got an exception. The parameters dictionary contains a null entry for parameter movie ID. So it's not that MVC couldn't find a parameter called movie ID embedded in the URL or in the query string or in the request body passed by form. And that's why we get this exception. Now I can change the query string parameter to movie ID. The error is gone. But in this case, I cannot embed one in the URL because the name of the parameter in our default route is ID. It's not movie ID. Let's have a look at our default route one more time. So in Solution Explorer, open up route config. Look, here's our default route. And the parameter we have here is called ID. So the value that we pass here will be identified as ID, not movie ID. And in movies controller, this movie ID will not be initialized when this action is called. Now let's rename this back to ID. So this is how ASP.NET maps request data to parameters of our actions. We can also use optional parameters in our actions. So let's create a new action, public action result index. So this action will be called when we navigate to movies. Now in this action, imagine we'll return a view with the list of movies in the database. We can add two optional parameters here, page index and string sort by. So if page index is not specified, we display the movies in page one. And similarly, if sort by is not specified, we sort the movies by their name. Now to make a parameter optional, we should make it nullable. So for page index, I'm going to add a question mark here to make it a nullable integer. And for sort by, we don't have to do anything because the string type in C-sharp is a reference type and it's nullable. Now inside the action, we check to see if these parameters have a value. So if page index has value, I put the not operator here. So if it doesn't have a value, I initialize it to one. Similarly, if string is null or white space, we pass sort by here, then we initialize it to name. And finally, for the purpose of our demo, I'm just going to return simple content. So string.format page index equals the first parameter and sort by equals the second parameter. And I pass page index and sort by here. Okay. Now build, control shift B. Back to the browser. Let's go to movies. So you can see I didn't have to specify any parameters. And by default, page index is one. 
and sort by is name. I can override this parameter. So I can pass page index, set it to two, and you can see it's updated here. But sort by is still name. I can override that too. Sort by release date. Now it's updated. Now in this case, we cannot embed these parameters in the URL because that would require a custom route that includes two parameters. In the next lecture, I will show you how to create a custom route.